Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Well, it's May 1st on the calendar, but it sure doesn't feel or look like it. We are looking at snowflakes and heavy rain to start off the first day of May. Let's hope this is short lived <laughs> and remind you it could always be worse. This is northern Michigan up in the Upper Peninsula Marquette where they could get as much as 18 inches of snow today. It's already coming down there. So as I said, it could be worse. <laughs> we start with our forward weather forecast with Ashley Verisi standing by to show us what's happening a little bit further south, thankfully. Yeah, it's painful to mm. see those images. You know, the Upers, they can have it. Here in southeastern Michigan, we're going to dodge the winter storm that is impacting most of the Upper Peninsula, especially Marquette, where you can see the snowfall projections over the next 24 hours. Here in the Lower Peninsula, we could end up with a little dusting or coating on elevated surfaces off to our west, but much of Metro Detroit won't see accumulation, but we will see some wet snowflakes flying as we get in the later part of today. This low pressure system parked over the Great Lakes, and you can see how all that moisture is churning clock counterclockwise around the low. So bringing snow not only to the Upper Peninsula, but in the Green Bay area. That will continue to drape uh, lower Michigan as we get into the later afternoon and evening hours. So a look at exact track 40 has that snow well to our northwest, but we are kind of dancing all around the moisture. 47 in Detroit, 47 in Ann Arbor, 46 in Port Huron, 42 in Adrian. It's just a cloudy and damp look out there. So today's high will be right around 47 degrees with those showers and some snowflakes will be mixing in for the later part of your afternoon and evening. We're going to time that out for you coming up in just a second, but of course you can take the forewarn weather app with you on the go and track radar as that precipitation is changing this afternoon. All right, thank you, Ashley. Breaking news from General Motors this noon. The automaker announcing it has cut several hundred contractor jobs. GM says that the cuts are happening at several locations, including the Warren Tech Center. GM is trying to save $2 billion by the end of next year. The automaker offered voluntary buyouts earlier this year, saying it was able to save about a billion dollars from that. Our other top story is violence escalating on our area freeways. Police are investigating two two separate shootings that happened on Detroit interstates overnight. Multiple people were shot on an I-75 ramp right at Brush Street downtown, and a semi-truck driver fired shots on I-96 near MLK at another vehicle. That area is once again shut down while police are looking for shell casings. Priya Mann is live near Eastern Market. Priya, where do things stand on both of these investigations? Well, Rhonda, as for the shooting that involved that truck driver, that truck driver is from out of state and is in custody this morning. As for the second shooting on I-375, police are still looking for the person who opened fire. That freeway shooting left one woman dead, critically injured another. A very busy morning for MSP as they were racing between multiple scenes. A chaotic morning for MSP investigating two separate freeway shootings with multiple victims. The first shooting happened just before midnight in the eastbound lanes of I-96 by MLK. Police were called about a traffic crash involving a truck driver who was possibly drunk and had a pistol. MSP say the truck driver fired several shots at another vehicle. No one was injured. The semi eventually became disabled and stopped and police say that's when the truck driver took off. Investigators closed the eastbound lanes of I-96 as police searched for shell casings. The K-9 unit assisted and the pistol was found close to the scene. Police say the shooter came back. A 37-year-old truck driver from Georgia is now in custody. As that investigation got underway, around 12.30 Monday morning, a second freeway shooting left one person dead and another critically injured. Police say four people left the Annex nightclub near Comerica Park early Monday morning. As the group got onto I-375, someone opened fire. Two people in the back seat were shot. The group drove the black SUV to Detroit Receiving Hospital, where bullet holes were clearly visible. The vehicle was cordoned off with caution tape. That freeway shooting left one woman dead and another person critically injured. So two separate freeway shootings in one case, leaving a woman dead. If you happen to be here on I-375 or on eastbound 96 near Warren between midnight and 1 a.m. and happen to see anything suspicious on the freeways, anything suspicious, you're asked to call MSP. 
Reporting live from Eastern Market, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya, thank you. Also right now, police are searching for the person who vandalized a Jewish community center in Royal Oak. The vandals spray painted a swastika and letters that seemed to represent a neo-Nazi group in Ukraine. It happened late last week at the Woodward Avenue Shoal, not far from the Detroit Zoo. Royal Oak Police and federal investigators are looking into who did it and are also asking for anyone with information to please reach out. A short time ago, the Jewish Community Relations Council is reacting to this, saying, quote, the recent acts of blatant anti-Semitism throughout Metro Detroit are not only disturbing and disheartening, it is completely unacceptable. Another U.S. bank has gone under. Federal regulators announcing this morning that the First Republic Bank has been seized. It is the third major bank to fail this year and the largest lender to collapse since the 2008 financial crisis. First Republic stock fell more than 75 percent in the past month because so many customers opted to move their money to larger banks following the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. That led to today's action by the FDIC. J.P. Morgan Chase is buying most of the failed bank locations. The 84 branches will reopen as Chase Banks. Over to Washington now, where the focus is on the economy with the 2024 presidential election heating up. President Biden is facing a battle on two fronts, the debt ceiling and his age. But as Bree Jackson reports from Capitol Hill, he's tackling the latter head on with humor. The annual White House Correspondents' Dinner is meant to celebrate America's free press. During this year's event, President Biden made a variety of jokes on a number of topics while also declaring journalism is not a crime. A night of laughs as President Biden took the stage at the White House Correspondents' Dinner Saturday, cracking jokes about the media, his political opponents, and himself. I believe in the First Amendment not just because my good friend Jimmy Madison wrote it. <laughs> the president using the spotlight to also stress the importance of protecting freedom of speech and Americans wrongfully detained in other countries. Journalist Evan Gerchkovich remains held in Russia accused of espionage. We're working every day to secure his release. Looking at opportunities and tools to bring him home. We keep the faith. This dinner comes as the 2024 presidential race ramps up. There's a growing list of Republican candidates eager to take over the White House. I'm unapologetically pro-life. And like many in the pro-life movement, I believe that abortion is a form of murder. And, and the American people trust Republicans more to handle the economy than the other side. President Biden officially launched his re-election campaign last week. His allies stress the 80-year-old is the best person for the job. So the numbers we're going to be talking about are the 12 million jobs created in the first two years that Biden's been president, the lowest unemployment in 50 years. Both sides making their pitch to voters. And during Saturday's event, President Biden also honored WNBA star Brittany Griner, who was also in attendance. It was this time last year that Griner was being wrongfully detained in Russia. Griner received a standing ovation from the crowd. In Washington, Bree Jackson, back to you. All right, Bree, thank you. Another phase of the I-275 construction project got underway this morning in Wayne County. Starting today, the northbound I-275 ramps to I-94 are closing. This closure is going to last until early July. And the I-94 ramps to northbound I-275 will also be closing. There are posted detours. Crews are hoping to finish this phase of the work before Metro Airport starts construction this summer. Better news at the gas pump, though, if you have to fill up today, gas prices are the lowest they've been in a month. AAA says that gas prices in Metro Detroit dropped 12 cents the past week to an average of 348 per gallon. It's pretty close to what we were paying last month. Experts say oil prices are dropping and gas prices could continue to follow. Let's hope so. Well, could some of your favorite TV shows go dark tonight? The deadline is midnight for a possible writer's strike, and it could impact everything from SNL to The Tonight Show, where things stand in last-minute negotiations. Also ahead, he just 
vanished. The suspect in an execution style mass shooting has escaped police. Why they just keep running into dead ends in their investigation to find him.